Continuing our reading in Poppy and Aerith by Avi. Today is two chapters. Chapter 17, Aerith chooses, and chapter 18, Spruce goes looking for Poppy. Chapter 17, Aerith chooses. Aerith decided Poppy's funeral had to be in the perfect place, large enough to hold her whole family. More importantly, it need, needed to be where each of them could see and hear what he had to say. After much hard thinking, he recalled a secluded dell open to the sky yet surrounded by trees. He remembered it as being carpeted with green grass and clover. Butterflies and bees floated about, along with the occasional dragonfly, flashing its rainbow-tinted wings in the air. The morning's sun would warm the grass dew into mist, turning the dell into a bowl of sweet perfume. By noon, every white, blue, and yellow flower would be unfolding. Twilight always transformed the dell into a world of softness. But when Aerith reached the dell, he found it blighted by the summer's drought. The grass was brown, withered leaves hung from the encircling trees. Not a solitary flower was in sight. No insects flittered about except for the old leaping grasshopper, its wings clacking angrily in the swollen heat. Still, Aerith was convinced the dell was the best spot. The beaten down grass would actually make it easier for the small mice to see him. At twilight, it would be cooler. He selected a boulder along the dell's upper edge from which to speak. It was flat and easy for him to climb. All of Poppy's family would be able to see him. Just as it should be, he mumbled. Aerith stepped to the edge of the boulder, sat up, on his hind legs and looked out over the dell. Mm, my friends, he began, my name, full name is Arizion Dorsata. And for those younger folk before me who may be ignorant as to what I am, I am a porcupine. So if you don't pay attention, you'll get a quill up your snoot. Uh, I'm here today, he said, to speak about my dear friend, uh, Poppy, unhappily now past up. It's a sad occasion, so let me begin by... Eris stopped speaking. No, I can't stand this. He shouted to no one. Tears filled his eyes and dripped off the end of his nose. He could barely talk or breathe. Instead, he bent down and wiped his eyes with no and nose with his front paws. Oh, I did love Poppy, he whispered. I really did. Uh, I know I uh, didn't do it well. But I did love her, and I, I miss her so much. What else is there to say? Poppy's gone. Uh, that's all that matters. His tears continued to fall. He ceased speaking. Even the grasshoppers were still. Chapter 18. Spruce Goes Looking for Poppy Spruce crawled out of the family's underground home and looked about the dry forest. There were two paths he could take. Having never traveled to Glitter Creek on his own, he was not sure which one to choose. As the young mouse tried to make up his mind, Dogbane popped up out of the entryway. Okay, he announced. I'm coming with you. Anyone else? asked Spruce. Just me, said Dogwood. And since this is your idea, you'd better know the right way to, to the creek. Or were you just pretending? I'm pretty sure it's this way, said Spruce making a quick guess and starting down one of the paths. You coming? Dogbane held back. Pretty sure or really very sure? You scared to come? Said Spruce, half hoping his brother would say yes so he could go on alone. It would be so neat to be the one to discover where Grandma Poppy had landed. Uh, not me, said Dogbane. He hurried after Spruce. The brothers went along the path for a while without speaking. After a few minutes, Dogbane sat down in a pool of shade by the side of the path. It's too hot to go fast, he announced. Spruce joined him. He stared up at the trees. He was used to going off alone, but today the trees seemed taller than he had remembered them. Dogbane followed his gaze. How high do you, do you think these trees are? Ten miles, said Spruce, blurting out the first thing that came into his head. Dogbane looked at his brother. That's not true, 
He is, insisted Spruce. Then how far is it till we get to the creek? Dogbane asked. Thirty miles. Thirty miles, cried Dogbane. How long is this walk going to take? Twelve minutes, said Spruce. Dogbane considered. How many minutes have we been going? The six? Come on, said Dogbane. Admit it. You just make up this stuff. You don't know what you're doing. Do, said Spruce. And this is really, really the way to the creek. I don't believe, don't believe me if, if you don't want to. And you're sure Grandma Poppy's at the creek? And that's where Uncle Era saw her. Dogbane sighed. Fine, let's keep moving. The two mice continued along the path. Ten minutes later, Dogbane halted. Um, how close to the creek are we now? Spruce studied the path. A little hill rose before them. Uh, see that hill? He said. From the top, you'll be able to see the creek. Fine. They went on and soon reached the top of the hill. Instead of seeing Glitter Creek, they arrived at a fork in the path. You said Glitter Creek would be here, said Dogbane. I said, insisted Spruce, we'd see the path that led to the creek. You did not. Did. Fine. Which path do we take? Spruce considered. There was nothing to distinguish one path from the other. He turned and stole a glance back over the way they had come and wondered if, after all, it might be better to go home. Know what? said Dogbane. You really don't know what you're talking about. I do too. This is stupid. Just stupid, said Dogbane. Grandma's fine. Mice can't fly. I'm going home. I don't scare so easy, said Spruce, and he walked ahead, taking the path that led to the right. Dogbane watched him go. Runt! he shouted, then spun around and began to race toward home. Spruce kept going, but after a few moments he stopped and glanced around. Dogbane! he cried. I I'm going! No reply came. Uneasy, Spruce reminded himself what Grandma Poppy had told him. A mouse has to do what a mouse has to do! According to Grandma, a mouse named Ragweed said that. Since Spruce's father was also named Ragweed, he supposed his father would say the same thing. Well, or should he? The spruce, spruce gazed down the path he had chosen to get to the creek. He would do it alone. As Spruce walked on, he thought, a mouse has to do. But it would be a lot easier to find Grandma if I knew where she landed. And that's the end of chapter 18.